Welcome back to uh, the reading of The Night I Met Father Christmas. We are now on chapter three. Um, we have just read through chapter two, one and two, um, where chapter one we met Father Christmas. He started to tell us a story. And in chapter two, we, we started that story with Torville Christmas, a uh, notorious and ruthless and lonely uh, business person, or business elf, as you might say, um, who we now has learned that it, a, a change to his life might have made a big change to ours too. So. Um, Let's, let's, let's just hit it off with chapter three. Midwinter is a very special time at the North Pole. If you ever go there, and I recommend you pay it a visit at least once in your life, you'll soon discover why. From the beginning of December until the end of January, the sun never rises. It's always dark, apart from at midday, when something very magical happens. For just a few minutes, the sky turns the most beautiful shade of blue. The elves call it a blue moment. And it's one of the most wondrous sights a person can see. As Christmas approaches, the blue moment gets shorter and shorter until a week before the big day when it stops happening altogether. Imagine that. For seven whole days and seven whole nights, everything is pitch black. And all the time, and every is pitch black all the time, and everyone begins to wonder whether they will ever see light again. Then, as if by magic on Christmas Day, the blue moment returns. A whole week of darkness might make a soul gloomy, if not downright depressed. So the elves have done something very clever. Instead of sitting at home, worrying about where the blue moment has gone, they celebrate. The dark days leading up to Christmas become increasingly jolly, and the Christmas Eve is the most fun of all. Everyone dresses up in their finest red velvet, drinks a special drink called mead, and generally has a high old time. Um, nevertheless, needless to say, Grumpy Torville didn't care for such merry-making. He wore red velvet because he hated to stand out, and because he had bought a red velvet trouser suit as a young elf and was down to get plenty of wear out of it. But that was all. He avoided the street parties, and he most definitely didn't drink mead. As far as he was concerned, the Christmas holiday was just another excuse for lazy elves to take time off work, and generally made a nuisance of themselves. On one particular Christmas Eve, however, something rather remarkable happened. Excited by the prospect of selling a great number of toys, Torville had woken early and caught the first horse sleigh into town. But as he struck down the snuck as he snuck down the high street, sorry, doing his best to avoid the street sellers and merrymakers, the sound of an old elfin sack pipe caught his ear. He wasn't usually one for sack pipes or music at all for that matter. But the melody he had, had he heard drifted through the sharp winter air seemingly oddly familiar. And was even odder than that, that was that it was coming from right outside his toy shop. Sure enough, huddled outside the front windows was a little group of elves, all singing at the top of their voices. That's odd, he whispered to himself. I know that tune. Like an elf in a trance, he pushed his way to the centre of the circle. There, floating in midair, was the sack pipe seemingly playing all of its own accord. Beside it stood a copper elf with red hair and bright green eyes, holding a large brown felt hat full of pennies. Torvald's eyes narrowed. He had always suspicious of copper elves. They had some of the strongest elf magic, but never seemed to use it to, per good, to good purpose. Magic, Torvald believed, should only, uh, only ever be used responsibly. And we see that on this page we've got a... Um, Picture of, of outside, um, you know, floating in midair, the sack pipe seemingly played by its own chords. So we've got that right in the, in the top of the picture, we've got the sack pipe playing all above everyone, we've got elves all singing around in front of the toy shop. He wielded his, he wielded his to, an, to run an efficient build. Ah, yes, yeah, sorry. Magic, Torville believes, should only be used responsibly. He ordered his to run an efficient business and keep his bills low, not to amuse elves on the street. With a flourish, the pipe sang out one final note and collapsed in a heap on the floor. Penny for the carol singers called the cop elf through the letterbox. It's no good, said a young elf, flapping his arms to try and keep warm. A very mean elf owns the shop and the meanest in the whole North Pole. He never gives us any money. Suddenly, Tornville came to his senses. The young elf was talking about him. Was this how people spoke of him behind his back? Without thinking twice, he pulled his scarf up round his face in case another of them recognised him. Maybe he didn't like our singing, said a voice in the crowd. 
I think we peeked at the butcher's side another. Disheartened, the group of elves drifted off, and the copper elf began to pack away the sack pipe. Soon only Torvel Torville was left. Part of him wondered whether he should drift off too, and come back when the coast was clear. But another part of him wanted to know more about the tune. That's a shame, he said to the copper elf. Seems like there's no one home. What's that, came the reply. Sorry, I can't hear what you're saying. I said it seems like there's no one home, said Torville, holding the scarf away from his mouth so that he could get the words out more clearly. Oh, they're home all right, said the copper elf with a twinkle in his eye. At least the pipe seems to think so. At that moment, the sack pipe rose from its box like an octopus escaping from an aquarium, floated over towards Torville and began to play again. I really don't know why it was doing that, said Torville. Why it's doing that, sorry, said Torville. The copper elf frowned. This wouldn't be your shop, would it? He asked. Oh, said Torville. No, no, no. I'm far too poor enough to own a grand shop like this. Though I have to say, he said, stepping back, stepping back and talking to the, in talking in the window display, they do have some partic sp sp particular sp they have some offers on. Um, <laughs> ignoring him, the copper elf simply held out the collection hat and shook it. Penny for the carol singers, he said with a sinister grin as the coins inside jingled. You're right, this is my shop, said Dorville, lowering the scarf. I just felt a bit embarrassed because I don't have any money on me. Nothing, said the copper elf. Nothing, Dorville replied, rather unconvincingly. Then you better have this, said the copper elf, plucking a coin from his hat, tossing it in Colville's direction. Torville fumbled and it landed in the snow. May it keep you as you deserve to be kept, said the copper elf. By the time Torville had found the coin, the copper elf had gone. Now that's the end of chapter three. I'm going to leave you here and someone else will be reading the next chapters. Thank you very much for reading along and I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, and Merry Christmas.